All right, everyone, this morning, them reporting to Chuck Grassley from the State Department pertinent to an email probe. The State Department is probing into the Clinton email server again. Uh, they found numerous rule-breaking and violations. And they're like, well, you know, they haven't meted out any punishment yet because the probe's going to go on until about September, uh, apparently. And they're like, well, we got a, this tidal wave of emails to go through, so it'll take us a while. Of course, there are violations of protocol and rule breaking and law breaking within Clinton's emails. And the fact that she was managing a private server under the circumstances was already unlawful. It broke the law. But she's never. But stop getting your hopes up. It's like but when there was the first email probe. A lot of people, I think the majority of, of like at least the Trump fans, were expecting her to face some sort of punishment. They were expecting, at the very least, I guess, a fine. Or the, Comey would come out when he ended his probe and say, well, yeah, you know, rules were broken and be more explicit. Instead, what he did was <laughs> exactly what was expected. Yeah, there, were, there was rule breaking. Yeah, there were breaches of protocol. Yeah, she should have known better. But, you know, the FBI declines to charge because she, he had already been weighed in on by Loretta Lynch uh, at the behest of the Clintons. Um, through the Obamas, basically, you know, you kiss ring, you owe a favor, Obama, we helped get you elected, now you're going to get Loretta Lynch to squish this out. What do you think the tarmac meeting was about in the first place? And so if you think that, you know, years later, in all honesty, um, that, you know, largely, you know, the evidence has been fucked around with probably by now, it probably wasn't retained properly, could have been manipulated by any of a, a million people, you expect that the State Department now having marginal access to some of this material is going to magically be able to make the FBI change its mind and then the next director will come out and say, oh yeah, we're charging Clinton with email uh, uh, bullshit. No, what they'll probably end up doing is they'll find some low, they, they'll do exactly what you know I expected to be done the first time around, which is can a couple of low-level staffers. They'll say, well, this person here, this, this security uh, guard, uh, who had access should have known better and did this, sent this email and fucked around, and so they need to, you know, go to jail for 10 days. This It'll be the Papadopoulos treatment all over again. It'll be like watching him, one of one of the uh, linchpins of the Trump crime mafia. Oh, two weeks in jail so, for making a couple of lies to the FBI while Trump leered down at him from the wall, which was his excuse, which is why he got a slap on the wrist. And it's like, well, Clinton lied to the FBI and to Congress, provably. We know that. We know that people associated with her lied. We know that they breached a dozen different protocols, broke a bunch of rules. And this wasn't one individual. This is a whole group of individuals. Some of these emails were on Wiener's laptop, the same one that contained other illicit material. It's, it's almost like the Clintons are surrounded by uh, shysters and people who are into really weird crimes. It's not like around Trump. Apparently, he's surrounded by people who are relative angels. The biggest criminal around him worked briefly on his campaign, and his crime was 10 years before. It had nothing to do with the contemporary era. Trump gets probed way harder, and they still don't find jack shit. If you actually expect Hillary Clinton to face any repercussions, any justice for her wrongdoing, you are woefully unaware of how the Clintons operate. And they are very, very good at covering their tracks. They have a lot of political allies. The fact that there's no Clinton in office right now doesn't really make any difference. Uh, half half of, uh, uh, of D.C. has kissed ring with the Clintons. Most of the Democrats, anyway. I wouldn't be surprised if there are some Republicans that owe her one. So she's not going to face any repercussions. If there were any attempt to actually put her in a cell or something, it would probably... Here's the other part. Probably it'd cause instability in this country. Look, the people on the left have been primed to believe that Trump is Dorito Hitler. I mean, even though if that's bullshit, even though it's propagandistic nonsense and anyone who's sane and clear-headed and unbiased sees him for what he is, which is like, he's a vague populist and really not much more, um, they think that he's a fascist. So if he decides to say, well, yeah, Hillary Clinton's going into a cell, even if it were a slap on the wrist, sort of like, okay, you're spending a night in jail for some protocol violation for the email server thing, it would be seen as an attack upon the political system itself. Again, it may be the opposite. It's actually doing justice to someone who clearly did the wrong thing, clearly did violate the law. Comey told us this and simply declined to bring charges. But millions of people within the country won't see it that way. It could get violent. It could get very, very dicey indeed if there were any attempt to prosecute her. As far as whether the State Department's probe, once it ends, will lead to the prosecution of lower-level individuals, possibly. 
That's possible. It could also spin off and cause another probe. But the thing is, you have to understand something. The legacy media right now is still single-mindedly focused on the Trump tax probe by Schiff and the House Dems, which is going nowhere and will continue to go nowhere. I, I'm going to make a thing here. I think they're slow walking it because they know full fucking well Trump didn't do anything wrong with his taxes. Hear me out. They want the probe to hang over his head. For political reasons, they think that it'll prevent him from winning re-election, or at the very least it'll reduce his chances of that if he has an active probe into his taxes over his head to be visible during the campaign. And they're not entirely wrong. But they don't want the probe to conclude. They want to put it under the rug and be quiet about it because they've already got inside info from people in the know, within the U.S. Treasury, within the IRS, wherever, within the New York AG's department, who have seen some of Trump's material, I'm sure. They already know that there's no tax fraud. They've already seen the material. They just haven't publicly announced that they have. They haven't publicly disclosed it because they got it through back channels. You think that they don't have one fucking person in the IRS who's capable of whistleblowing by pulling the tax info? Probably someone from the IRS already did that. Told their supervisors, well, there's weird shit. And the supervisor probably told them, shh, don't say anything. Because, you know, we're proud Democrats and we, you know, the whole goal is just to have the probe stay active forever, not to culminate it because the probe would be defeated. Trump would win re-election because then it would be proof that it was a witch hunt. As far as the Clinton email probe, this is a fairly, you know, fairly lengthy State Department probe into the issue, but it's not going to cause any repercussions for her. Look, Hillary Clinton, she's not in office. She's an old woman. She was his, pri his you know, opponent during the last election. It would be seen as hyper-partisan and could spark a civil war or something like that among this, the pink-haired crowd. The Democrats don't want that. They don't want their constituents to get beaten up by the police for rioting. Well, they don't care if that happens once in a while, but they don't want them laid waste to because the you know, anarchy prevails. They don't want their constituents to have to be uh, rounded up and put in prison and become felons so that they can't vote anymore. That'd be pretty bad. It'd be really bad for California's uh, you know, demographics as far as getting representation. By the way, do felons in the population count towards the number of representatives you get? Because, I mean, in most states, felons can't vote, so why would they count towards representation? I'm wondering, maybe they should uh, pass a constitutional amendment about that, because then California will lose three or four uh, electoral votes. Probably at that point, it'd be really funny to watch that. We have some problems in some of the urban states. Not so much a place like Iowa. Plus, that would help with criminal reform. They'd try to keep people out of prison now, wouldn't they? Eh, they probably should do that, too. Mm, dealing drugs, oh my god, eh, who gives a shit? Shouldn't even be a crime. That's about all. Peace out.